so good morning everyone good morning so let us start i'll just uh, yes. we'll do a short meditation i'll play the instruction we'll listen to it and then along with uh, the instruction as it proceeds we'll meditate for five minutes right i'll play the computer audio yeah The basic idea, what we are trying to do is to develop the ability to be conscious, to be aware. Because so often when we are thinking or feeling or speaking or whatever activities we are undertaking, we are not present. We are just caught up in all, all our thoughts and we're not even aware we're thinking. So the practice is simply twofold to gradually allow the background noise of our thoughts to begin to calm down a bit and at the same time to develop the ability to be aware, to be mindful. Mindful means just to know what's going on when it's going on without commenting on it. So the easiest way is to start with Zygonics for and life. Of course, we are not breathing. And normally when we're breathing, we are not conscious that we're breathing. So now we are simply going to bring the awareness to the breath, especially the out breath and then allow it to come back in and then out again without straining it, without keeping the mind very relaxed, very spacious. And all the thoughts going on in the background, it's like if one were in a room where, say, the television is on, but we are reading a book or working on the computer. So Although we are not turning the television off, it's there in the background, but our attention is not on the television. Our attention is on whatever is our task in front of us. So our attention here is on the breath and the thoughts are going on in the background. We're not trying to stop the thoughts. We're just not giving them any attention. And if we get caught up in the thoughts again, as soon as we recognize that, no problem, we just bring the attention back to the breath. So it's very, very simple. And it's very important not to be tense or tight, just to leave the mind feeling very, very open, spacious, relaxed, but aware. And this is the essence of the practice. You know, later you go to, on, you know, giving attention to the thoughts, giving attention to inner phenomena, etc. But the crux of it is the ability to be attentive to what we want to be attentive to. And here that is just very simply the breath. We also can use, I'm not guiding the meditation. This is why I'm telling us now what to do. So even during the day, if we are walking, we can just be aware that we are walking. When we're sitting, we can be aware we're sitting. If we're agitated, we can again bring the focus back to the breath. The breath and the mind are very interconnected. And when the breath is smooth, then the mind also begins to calm down. If we're excited, the breath becomes agitated. If we're fearful, the breath changes. The mind and the breath are very interconnected. They say like the, the rider and the horse. So as our attention gets more settled, the breath also will begin to get more settled. It's such a simple practice, but the Buddha used it in order to become enlightened. 
it's a very simple practice, but at the same time, it is a very profound practice. And we shouldn't think it's, it's not important because if the Buddha used it in olden himself as his main meditation practice, I think that shows how deep and significant it really is. And it's so simple for everybody because we're all breathing. So maybe we just sit for five minutes and just, just make the back straight, but not tight. It doesn't matter if one's sitting on the floor, if one's feet, keep the feet so that they are on, on the floor or on the, on the cushion. Eyes open, eyes closed, doesn't matter. Keep the shoulders relaxed and then just breathe and know we're breathing. Let's do it. So, how to become the master rather than the slave of our minds, isn't it? And how to open up the heart to unconditional love for all beings. How wonderful. We have the potential within us, isn't it?
So this is uh, something we can do any time of the day. This uh, little teaching. Usually our uh, focus is all the times, the thoughts that we are creating, the feelings that they are that are there. And no wonder that we feel trapped there. We don't feel really free. So coming back to the breath is something which we can just use it as a tool the, throughout the day, throughout the day. And the moment we connect with breath, we connect with the body. And as uh, Tenzing Palmo was sharing that the moment we bring our mind to the breath, we are bringing mind to the body. Usually the mind is not home. The mind is not in the body. It's just lost in the forest of thought. And that's why many a times we happen to have diseases. You know, only later on we realize that we have this disease because the mind is not home. It happens with all of us all the time. So this is something coming back to the breath. Whenever we are, uh, you know, overwhelmed or even in the regular day to day life, even when we are not over, overwhelmed at times, when we are getting lost in the trip of thoughts, bringing the back, uh, bringing back the mind to the out breath or to the awareness of breathing. Okay, this is as she was sharing that, okay, I am now agitated, I am now angry. So just taking stance as awareness again and again. And this is, since we were going to reflect upon compassion today, you know, we, first we have to be compassionate to our own selves. And if we keep on torturing ourselves like we do, being lost in thoughts, uh, that's not really true compassion. Yeah. So anything anyone wants to share here before we move on to the next thing? And also to realize that why are we having these, you know, why do we meditate? Uh, we, I think we normally, normally we see that when we have okay, okay, good days, you know, we don't bother to think about any spiritual practice or even meditation or anything. But when we begin to have difficult times, when we begin to have challenging times, we suffer then we want to have peace you know and this is one of the beginning in the beginning we come through our suffering to a spiritual path and then later on we can continue and take it even through our good days you know so called good days which we consider our good days <laughs> where things are okay everything is according to what i want and hence you know, in those times if i can also continue a practice like this then it really helps. So I'm going to read something on compassion and then we can maybe again take a five minutes silent meditation and then we can reflect upon it, share upon it later. So I found it very, very relevant, uh, compassion and also very crucial to practice. When it comes to practice, we really uh, fail a lot. So let us read this and then we can reflect upon it later. To relate with others compassionately is a challenge. Relating, communicate, really communicating to the heart and being there for someone else. Our child, spouse, parent, patient or a homeless woman on the street means not shutting down on that person which means, first of all, not shutting down on our own selves. This means allowing ourselves to feel what we feel and not pushing it away. So first of all comes validation that I, I am agitated. So I'm allowing myself to physically feel what I'm feeling, not pushing it away that I'm agitated and I don't want to be agitated and because spiritually it's not good to be agitated. So, you know, there we want to push things away while we are almost like being hypocritical. So, 
This means allowing ourselves to feel what we are feeling and not pushing it away. It means accepting every aspect of our lives, even the parts we don't like. To do this requires openness, which in Buddhism is also sometimes called emptiness, not fixating or holding on to anything. So I don't have an image in my mind that I am a this and that person and I can't be agitated. So you are allowing yourself to be agitated, not listening to the dictate of agitation, but you know that the overwhelm or the situation is there. You know that something is there. Only in an open, non-judgmental space can we acknowledge what we are feeling. Only in an open space where we are not caught up in our own version of reality can we see and hear and feel who others really are, which allows us to be with them and communicate with them properly. So if I become accepting towards my own overwhelm, anger, jealousy, hate, then I also become compassionate when I find the other in the same situation because I have seen that all in me. So it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Yeah, something more here on compassion. Very important, I believe. Although this is ordinary Buddhist teaching, it's difficult to live it. It's even difficult to hear that what we reject out there is what we reject in ourselves. And what we reject in ourselves is what we are going to reject out there. So if I'm blaming a person, I'm victimizing a person, and I'm not liking somebody, there is something out there which a part of me only, which I'm not able to see and accept. But that in a nutshell is how it works. If we find ourselves unworkable and give up on ourselves, then we will find others unworkable and give up on them. And maybe those of us who know, you know, most of the times we see that people who have really practiced to walk on a spiritual path, we find them working with prison workers. We find, find them working with criminals, you know, because they feel easy to approach now criminals. You know, now they don't label it them as criminals or sinners because they have seen all those parts in themselves and accepted those parts in themselves and hence it becomes easy to communicate and you know work with a person who may be called an, an addict from a social point of view or a sinner or a criminal or a terrorist but people like us ordinary people since we have not truly seen all of our own parts which is a long process and not accepted all those parts. Hence, we fear coming in close contact with a terrorist or a criminal or people who actually need work, you know, along with our own selves. We also need work. What we hate in others, we hate in ourselves. To the degree that we have compassion for ourselves, we will also have compassion for others. Having compassion starts and ends with having compassion for all those unwanted parts of ourselves, all the imperfections that we don't even want to look at. Compassion isn't some kind of self-improvement project or ideal that we are trying to live up to. Yeah. And then she also talks about blame and that when we blame someone else for my situation, what we do is, blame is a way in which we solidify ourselves. Not only do we point the finger when something is wrong, but we also want to make things right. You know, so this is out there wrong and I know the right way, you know, which was not workable. I know the right way. In any relationship that we stick be with, be it marriage or parenthood, employment or a spiritual community, whatever, we may also find that we also want to make it righter than it is. 
you know so something in me is more righteous you know i know the right way and this is how it should be i'm sticking on to that i'm holding on to that because we are a little nervous and why are we a little nervous because it's not happening our way and when it's not happening our way it's a little embarrassing you know and i don't want to be in an embarrassing situation maybe the situation is not exactly living up to our standards so we justify it and try to make it extremely right you know why because we can't handle a situation where it's groundless you know we are nervous and uh, things are not happening my way and i just can't take it and i just can't be with that that situation that yeah things are not my way and that's how it is it, it that can also be one of the ways yeah so she is suggesting a way how to deal with such difficult situations we could begin to shift that deep seated ancient habitual tendency to hang on to have everything on our own way on terms the way to start would be first when we feel the tendency to blame to try to get in touch with what it feels like to be holding on to ourselves so tightly what does it feel like to blame how does it feel to reject what does it feel like to hate each of us there is a lot of softness a lot of heart touching that soft spot has to be the starting place so when things become hard and challenging and usually they become hard and challenging when uh, there is some deep rooted something in me which is not letting go which is not letting go of wanting to have things my way it's hard to accept so to look at that particular inwardly to look at that and to release it you know to to see that making it hold so tightly is making me suffer more no and also in the same moment we can also use the pain to connect with other suffering the practice of tonglen again you know that i know that how it suffers so badly i suffer so badly when i hold things tightly and all the people right now who are holding things tightly i connect with that suffering i inhale that suffering and i exhale lightness joy and contentment you know and now i know their pain since i know my own pain i know their pain when we hold to things and people and situations so tightly so letting it go and not only for ourselves but also letting it go for others in the similar situation yeah Yeah, Jasmine, you want to share? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, I have a question. You know, in the last session we were talking about compassion too. So just a challenge in day-to-day -day life, which I cannot make sense of. So you know, um, somehow it's easier to give compassion to if I hear somebody does did a murder. Somehow that feels distant. but if somebody is up close and personal and the interaction hits you in a different way like it feels like it hits you home so in that situation so I'll share the situation in which like we have relatives like some cousins who obviously we were close and all that that's one thing but as the kids are growing up they have their opinions and you know with this whole whatever the situation right now it's with covid people are taking stands and what not which doesn't bother me your choice and all that i i understand that but that's not the problem but i find that awkwardness from the other side so even to day to day transaction where you meet the person you kind of can't avoid them you are in the family setting with other people 
it's becoming really awkward, you know. But to, so at some extent, I was given some attitude to which I was okay, but it still kind of bothers me. It kind of bothers me, and I cannot understand. Like, I'm trying to sit in it, why it bothers me. Um, I thought about it, like, do I want them to think good about me? Is that what it is? Like, I sort of want that. It's not even that, but I, okay, I let that go too. But I'm not feeling very open-hearted about the whole experience, you know? even if they are. Like, okay, if they, they are, even if I'm feeling rejected, even to hold space or to feel that, I don't know why I'm not feeling it. Maybe it's a process I have to go through, but I something I, I cannot, I've been sitting with it for a couple of, yeah. more than a week yeah. or two. Yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, I was thinking, and I've been actively, like I said, I've been consciously, that's why we can say something I'm, aspiring to do more is to cultivate more compassion yes yes so in but i do get bothered in that situation yeah it's almost like i cannot handle myself forget about the other person yeah but yeah but it's very challenging so yeah. yeah and it's kind of disturbing my own like you know i was feeling all compassion good in that to you. Mm. here comes a simple challenge mm. yeah. so jasmine i think it's a beautiful it, it, these kind of situations are beautiful places to start something intensely, you know, to to cross that threshold maybe on which we are at. So if you just keep the focus on yourself, just keep the focus, bring the focus back on your situation. So you said, I'm not feeling that open hearted. Right? Allow yourself to not feel open hearted. this is what we say relaxing into the present moment or being okay with whatever the situation is so usually when we are not feeling open-hearted we resist it mm -hmm. you know that how dare i don't feel open-hearted it's like i'm supposed to feel the compassion i'm supposed to feel the compassion while i'm not feeling it <laughs> and in that we are closing doors to our own close-heartedness so imagine that close-heartedness is a abandoned child who has come to you and she wants attention she wants to be held and i am rejecting close heartedness right so when you feel that i am suffocating myself or you know i am not opening myself to the other person in this situation mm. allow yourself that yes this is how it feels in the heart when i don't open myself to the other person and i can be like this So relaxing with that close heartedness. And this also connects you with the similar pain of others who at times flee, feel close hearted. Not everyone is born with the open heart. It's only when we allow ourselves to be close hearted, paradoxically, that we open our heart you know, to ourselves. So completely just shift the focus out, remain in the outer situation may have triggered something in you, but remain with what is there in you. So allowing Jasmine to be open heart, uh, to be close hearted. Yeah. No, it's funny. Now you said it. Now I can see it. Mm. How I was the resistance again. Yeah. It's yeah. so easy to the flow of compassion the feeling was riding high was so good it yeah didn't have, you kind of got attached to it attached to that yes thing. yes yes yeah. and we have images about compassion you know so the mind has images about compassion it sticks to those images mm -hmm. and when you are ready life throws these challenges at you that here you know practice compassion with your close heart <laughs> 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 I see it clearly, like you know, it's the same thing. With it. I mean, I think just so aware of it, they, you know, feel the emotions, go through the emotions, and you know, be open to again that roomy guest house. It just didn't look at it, you know, this is how you get blinded. Again. Yeah, it happens. And it happens. That is, it's like right there. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah.
No, that's why I'm here for the meditation because it was causing so much agitation. Yes. Me, today I'm like, I need to sleep. Yeah. So whatever overwhelm and you know this example that you shared is a beautiful example because it happens with us all the time. All the time something external triggers something in me. But my focus usually remains on the external stuff. And I evade confronting what is happening in me. So if I just remove the outer trigger for a moment, which I can come back to later, can I see that what is it that I am wanting to accept or what is it that I have to deal with in myself? And so right now I am feeling embarrassed. Can I be with this embarrassment? That is compassion. Not pushing embarrassment away. And it you would see when we practice, you know, it takes great courage great courage to be with embarrassment yeah, right. take great courage to make a fool out of yourself in front of people honestly exactly because you know the um, day-to-day mundane transaction you're expected to be i can sort it out with myself later on but in that moment and i think that's what i was trying to be in that moment trying to be some, i don't know what i was trying but in that moment i felt i understood that and I understood myself, but it, it's like I felt that I had, I was nowhere. Mm. But you could see that, you know, external extension. It's almost like making a fool out of yourself. But I was just, I think I just like to experiment with mm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 And then, you know, when we have, mm-hmm. so the external situation, the relative triggered something in you. Now you come back to yourself. You, now you're, you see your closed heart, you become okay with that, yes, allow my closed heart to be. Then when I gain uh, gain a little stronger grip on my own being, then what I can do is to experiment, I can go and go into other person's shoes. So what was that relative feeling in that situation where he was inwardly? No, how would I, if I am in the same situation, how would I feel? That, but that we cannot do when we are weaker. You know, first I have to gain the grip of my own territory and then only I can go into someone else's shoes. Yeah. So first I extend compassion to myself and then I extend it to others that I know what it is to be like in your shoes. It's not easy. I see that. But that comes only later because, well, yeah, in the beginning I have to see where but I am. Do you find like some people, I mean, obviously some situations it works, but some situations you find people just closed off and they close off more. So I don't know if I should take the onus of that, like, because sometimes I feel I, I kind of, it's not balanced, the responsibility of that whole transaction, I take it up on myself. Yeah. Do that make sense? Like sometimes I find, yeah, I, I tend to do that a lot, that I take it upon myself a little too much yeah but is there something like that where you need to draw the line or you need yeah. to have a bump to do? yes so when for example again consider a situation that you're sitting and you're taking others closed whatever state onto yourself that i am responsible and i have to do this right in that situation become aware of how are you feeling taking others responsibility on yourself how does it feel Become aware of your state. But it's so unconscious, right? That's it is unconscious. It's not as clear. It's not so clear that it's mine or is it there. So that's what I mean. So whatever, you know, I am taking a burden. Mm-hmm. I am taking a burden. Mm-hmm. Unconsciously, I continue to listen to the dictate of the burden. The only mm-hmm. path is to become conscious of it. Mm-hmm. That here I am taking the burden again. You know, here I started to think about it again. You know, and how does it feel when we are thinking too excessively about others or my own burden? How does it feel? It you feel suffocated in the chest, you don't feel right, you feel unwell, you know. And in that awareness mm-hmm. of your situation, you know, you you transmute it. You transmute it how? Now I understand the pain of all those people who go through this uh, taking responsibility of fixing this and that and this and that. How pain, you know, how pain, 
how the, how much pain it causes it to my heart so in that you are also becoming conscious of your situation and you are transmuting it into compassion there is no other way uh, you can open your heart you have to first become conscious of where you are unconsciously you cannot open yourself to compassion So twenty four seven a day, my work is to be okay, conscious of. So next time, if you. Yeah, please go ahead. No, no, I get. No, I was just. Thank you, sir. I was just listening to you, just taking it in. What you were saying. Yeah. Twenty four cross seven. You were saying. Yeah, I said just just our task is to twenty four seven become conscious of whatever we are going through. whatever inner movement inner ripple we are going through because we miss many a times many a times we are not conscious of those ripples they just happen later on i realized oh my god what just happened hmm? so but in the middle of the situation if i become conscious i'll i'll share a uh, example maybe which makes it a little kind of a clear so i was having a dream and there was something that i was going through and it was a subconscious something which the dream created right so the the dream created the whole situation as i was it repeatedly thinking about in my mind and in the middle of the dream i woke up and i recollected the whole dream the caught the thread of the dream from the start and i said to myself this is exactly the thought pattern that is building up in my mind what is being portrayed in my dream and i asked myself do i want to believe this story because it's my mind which is creating it what is subconscious it's our own patterns which are creating those stories i asked myself do i want to believe in this story and something in me said no i don't want to believe this because i realize that i am creating it for myself if it's a burden i am creating this burden by thinking about it excessively no and once i said no you know it just gave me a lot of power back that i recognize this is my subconscious pattern which is creating this dream a story in my head i don't want to believe in it that was really that really hit that yeah your story yeah so and this we are doing throughout you know the day to day look yeah please go ahead jasmine yeah please go ahead no i i'm thinking if i just what you said with really it's um, hitting me um at a good spot i i'm thinking if i should reflect on that or say what i was going to say earlier that the challenge i have is again with this whole being and i'm not even saying like forcefully because i was just like compassion practice compassion practice and i want it to come naturally or naturally So just in terms of understanding, I think it's coming naturally. You know, I can see other person's side and all that. But in, I find even spirituality practical. So I can't really say in practical life. Like, you know, to me, it's not really that separate. But still, like in our day-to-day life, you know, do we really have a choice to say no, or is it again the story I'm creating in my mind? You know, if अगर कोई नई ढंग से बात कर रहा है, not even बात कर रहा, that's not my problem. But saying if I'm not making any difference, my time, my energy is valuable. If it doesn't mean the same to the person, which is fine, no issue there. But then, do I need to make the effort? Like, do I have to? Like, if I have a choice, then I would rather not. But I think again, it's maybe a lot of cultural condition. खुद की ही आदत है, वो आदत ही पड़ी हुई है कि should रिश्ते निभाने तोड़ने बहुत इजी हैं निभाने मुश्किल है जस्ट इट्स एज आई थिंक जैसमिन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स इंडिविजुअल कॉन्टेक्स टू कॉन्टेक्स सिचुएशन यू नो वट इज द बेस्ट पॉसिबल थिंग टू डू बट ओवरऑल आई कैन से दैट ऑल अवर रिलेशनशिप्स कैन बी अ ब्यूटिफुल मीडियम फॉर अवर ओन इनर ग्रोथ इनर डिस्कवरी all so whether you put the hand in the yeah. situation or you do not put the hand in the situation don't whatever that is secondary that is really not primary so whether you on the social surface you nibha the relationship or don't nibha the relationship it doesn't no. matter 
doesn't matter that's really secondary whatever you go through within yourself you make use of that on the path take it on the path and see that okay right now what am i holding on to so tightly maybe many a times unconsciously we have a right for that situation that this is the right thing that should be happening mm-hmm. and which is not happening so we are unconscious about that we are holding so tightly to something right who made this right you know it's my mind that kind of is sticking to it you know that this is how it should be happening this is how that person should be behaving why who decides that and the moment i let go of that holding so tightly you know i i relax but we don't we are not able to relax because when we let go or folding so tightly it is embarrassing ego wants to hold things tightly the mind wants to hold things tightly and when i let go it's kind of a very hanging in the middle state the ego doesn't want to be there mm-hmm. you know that's why in political parties oh, we we are either in favor of or against you can't hang in between because it's the I you think, know yeah that's my that's what i call my problem is i cannot take sides or mujhe middle mein rehna theek lagta hai not middle by middle means in open okay try that you know ki when i'm entering somebody's house sort of like that practice that it to be um i come just with openness right now na agla na pichla let me see open let me be the fresh person this moment be fresh and everything be fresh and it goes beautifully i think problem aa jati hai when you like you said ke wo stand lena and when you got get caught up in that thing like you no know, even say with the whole covid thing i am again i'm not against for mai koi itni wo reche to usme mai nahi aati it's just what it is to me this is and i also hold space room for everybody else whatever and again it's not about the situation this is just an example right for what i mean and we see that a lot because day to day jo aam logo ki baat hoti hai it's all about gossip even standing so if you're seeing something is it really necessary to comment on it you know sitting down and just kuch bhi dekh ke usko ye acche mein dal le ya bure mein dal le and what i find challenging is i don't know maybe it's just maybe a need right now like i crave more for that i play more for spending time with myself that i find all that very futile not in a judgmental way to them but for myself i find it very cute mujhe lagta hai ki mera jo precious time hai na mujhe jaise us cheez ki bhook hoti hai that meditation i don't know if it's more about that then the it has no issue with i don't want anybody to change kuch wo to it's not that but that's something i can do yeah i think then it's uh, it's absolutely important because if i'm feeling the need not to be in a you know in a kind of a situation with many people and i want to spend some time with myself that's the call of the hour we i must this is also an act of kindness that i give myself space you know and and i give my own self a lot of room to be whatever that room is either reading or music or sitting silent or listening to something if that is the call of the hour mm-hmm. then we must because that's also an act of compassion that's also necessary yeah thank you thank you and without that we cannot okay. actually you know without without having so much of quiet time with ourselves most of the times we are just having ego clashes outwardly with people but when i mm-hmm. enjoy and sit in a relaxed time with myself then i go out and interact with people then i can be a different person you know i can be a diff- because something must have happened in the quiet time which changes me every time it softens me it mellows me down and then when i interact with people that is my if i can say my testing area you know that okay how am i doing and again my focus is to bring my attention back to my own triggers my inner ripples outer ripples are nothing but a trigger what is happening in me what is happening in me again and again we have to come to that yeah 
Thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you. meditation again we'll stay with the breath focused with the breath and if we wander away in thoughts we'll just take it like as then the one more sharing as a background chatter background tv noise we would not go into the content of thinking staying with the breath for 5 minutes it's 804 right now here and at 809 i'll just share, uh, open my mouth and share so starting now for 5 minutes so 2 minutes more staying with the breath
so as we go about with our day we can keep this handy whenever thought forms are too entangled and meshy to come back to the breath and to let go to let go of our clinging to thoughts and stories and coming back to the here and now yeah thank you everyone thank you for joining thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> bye bye